Welcome to Nafi Paints, and in this video I'll be showing you how I painted a Man Crusher Gargan from the Sons of Behemoth. Let's crack in. Before I've painted the model, I've undercoated it with Vallejo's Hobby Paint White. For the skin, I've decided to apply the paint through an airbrush. This will give me some nice even thin coats, and this will also allow real subtle transitions between the colours. This first colour here is Monster Brown from the Army Painter. I've base coated all the skin with this colour. While using the airbrush, each time I applied the colour, I added a couple of drops of Vallejo's Flow Improver just to help it flow through the airbrush. With the monster brown down, now I've gone over to tan flesh from the Army Painter. I sprayed the tan flesh onto the model, leaving some of the monster brown visible in some of the recesses. With the tan flesh done, then I went over to Cobalt Skin from the Ember Painter. Again, same thing, sprayed it over the entire model, leaving some of the tan flesh visible. The fourth colour for the skin was a Corpse Pale. I've sprayed this really finely onto the model, I'm trying to highlight areas with this colour, like the shoulders, the top of the head, the belly. The last colour here is Corpse Pale mixed with Model Air White from Vallejo. This is about a 60-40 mix. And with this colour, I've just hit the belly, the face, the shoulders again in small bursts to really brighten up certain areas and highlight the skin. With all the skin base coats down, now it's time to block in all the other colours for the model. This first colour here is Mournfang Brown from Citadel. I've applied this with two thin coats in all the areas, mixed with a little water. With these base colours, try to avoid the skin at all costs, as it's been airbrushed and it's harder to fix with a paintbrush. What I did, I just had a spare brush sitting in a cup of water handy. And if I did happen to get some paint on the skin, I used the brush with pure water just to wipe it away. If it does dry, it's not the end of the world. You can use a paintbrush to try and salvage it, but just try not to make your life more difficult than it needs to be. This colour here is Mephiston Red from Citadel. Like the Mornfang Brown, this is applied with two thin coats with a little water added to the paint. This is a really lovely red and goes on with really good coverage. This next colour here is Griffin Blue from the Army Painter. Like the other colours, it was painted with two thin coats and a little water added.
This is Khaki from Vallejo. This is from their game color range. Like the other colors, this is two thin coats straight from the pot. For the green areas, this is green skin from the Ami Painter. This is applied with two thin coats and a little water. For all the yellow areas, I've gone with Avalon Sunset from Citadel. This is applied also with two thin coats and this is straight from the pot. If you don't own this colour, go out and get it. It's a top yellow to be used as a base. It's opened a lot of painting doors for me now using yellows. It's a little bit expensive being a Games Workshop paint. You get a lot of use out of it and I found it to be top value. To paint the material tied around his leg, I've gone with Field Grey from the Ami Painter. This is applied with three thin coats and a little water added to the paint. For the scales on his forearm, I've gone with Corn Red from Citadel. This is applied with two thin coats. For the skull on the end of his weapon, I've gone with Skeleton Bone from the Painter. This is painted with two thin coats with a little water added to the paint. For all the metallic areas of the model, I've gone with Gunmetal Grey from Vallejo. This is from their model colour range. This is applied with two to three thin coats with no water added to the paint as it thins out the metal too much. This metal is quite dark, so if you're not happy with the colour, you can just swap over to a lead belcher from Citadel. This was applied to the spikes of his weapon, his collar, the shield on his belt, and the armour piece on his forearm. For the shield on his forearm, I've decided to give it a split pattern. The first half is painted with Cantor Blue from Citadel. This is applied with two thin coats. The second is Corax White, also from Citadel. To paint the cross on his chest piece, this was also Corax White from the Citadel. And this was mixed with a little water in the paint just to help it flow. For the belt around his bicep, I've painted the leather parts with leather brown from the Ami Painter. This is a pot with two thin coats straight from the pot. And for the metallics of the belt, I've gone with lead belcher. This is a pot with two thin coats straight from the pot. For the shield on his belt, the trimming and the Chaos Star were done with Retributor Armor from Citadel. For the material on the forearm that wraps around his wrist, on back to the Mephiston Red, it also loops through the shield and over the top of the chest piece. Apply that carefully onto the material, try not to touch the other colours. If you do happen to touch the other colours, don't worry, you can just go back and repaint. For his tongue, I went with Blue Violet from Vallejo. This was applied straight from the pot. I got away with one coat here. For the teeth, I've gone with the base coat of Celestial Grey from Citadel. This is applied straight from the pot with two thin coats.
For his horns, hooves and fingernails, I've gone with Talan Sand from Citadel. This is applied with two thin coats with a little water mixed in to help it flow over the model. To paint his little human snack, I've gone with tanned flesh from the Army Painter. This is applied again with two thin coats with a little water. For all the stitching around the model, I've gone with Gorgon Hide from the Army Painter. This is applied straight from the pot. While painting the stitching, you're bound to get it on the other colours, so don't worry too much. As long as you paint with thin coats of this paint, if you do happen to touch the wrong colour, just go back and retouch it up. Back onto his lunch, I've decided to paint his pants with Monster Brown from the Army Painter and the shirt with Leather Brown also from the Army Painter. For his shoes, this is done with Abaddon Black from Citadel. This is one coat. And for the little belt around his waist, I've gone with Mournfang Brown again from Citadel, tray from the pot with two thin coats. Now I've given it a spray of Mr. Superclear's matte varnish to seal the colours in. With all the base coats down, now it's time to finally move on to the fun step. This will be the oil stage. This is my new love of painting. I'm really enjoying painting with oils. If you haven't noticed, most of the channel has a lot of oil paints involved. But anyways, this first colour here is a mix of Burnt Umber and Azo Yellow Deep, both from Van Gogh. I'd guess this is about a 70-30 mix of the two colours. I've put a little bit of white spirit into the paint. The consistency I'm going for here is it's like a watery sort of consistency, but that will hold the paint and the pigment in it. With this mix, I've laid the giant down, and using a toothpick, I'm going to apply the paint to the brush, wipe a lot of it off, so I've just got a little bit left, place the brush over the model, and just use the toothpick to flick on the paint onto the model. I'm trying to form dots here, it makes it look like freckles and like skin damage from sun. You're going to get this everywhere, it's really unavoidable unless you mask it off. Due to it being oil paint, it's no big deal. This is the reason why I sprayed the model with the Mr. Super Clear Matte Varnish, as it will help protect the paint, especially the skin, from any excess white spirit we use to remove the oil paints that we overspray. Any paint that you do get in the wrong areas, will remove later with the white spirit and a paintbrush. The best way to do this is go a little bit light, have a look at the model, let it dry. If you want more, just add more. If you do go too heavy, don't worry. With the white spirit, we can just remove it anyways. Once I was happy with the amount I flipped onto the model, now just using a clean brush with pure white spirit on it, the brush is not soaked in white spirit, but it has got a little bit inside the bristles. I'm just carefully going around the model, dabbing, poking and painting on to remove any excess little dots I don't like. The white spirit and the paint that you're removing will also leak a little bit into the skin, darkening in areas and starting to build up the tone of the skin. Do these over parts of the skin that you want to remove the dots from. I went with all the parts that are not generally in sunlight. They wouldn't have so much skin damage to them. The parts of the shoulders, the front of the belly and his back would see a lot of sunlight so I left a lot there. All the areas of the clothing, the weapons and anywhere else where you shouldn't have the dots you have to remove it 100%. So just take your time, go around and clean up all the model with the white spirit. And the key here is because we're using pure white spirit, you just got to be gentle, patient and gentle. Even with the Mr. Super Clear Matte Varnish, it can still get through and damage the paint so just go really slowly and gentle.
Once I was happy with the amount of paint I removed, I hit the model with a hairdryer on low setting. Dried it out thoroughly, then let it sit for a further 15 minutes. Because we're going to add some more white spirit to the model, we need to protect these spots, so I hit it with Mr. Super Clear's matte varnish really lightly again. The next step is the same again, but this time I've added some Azo Red Medium from Van Gogh into the mix. I'm not too sure how much I added to the paint. I was going for a more brownie orange look in the second round of the freckles and sunspots. So again, this is going to be a personal choice if you decide to do this. And the same as before, adding it the same way and removing it the same way. I've sealed that again with Mr. Superclear's matte varnish. Now I'm happy with the sun damage and freckles I've achieved. I made myself two mixes here. The first mix is Azo Red Medium mixed with White Spirit. It's a really, really watery mix. And this is just a pure red. And the second mix is the Azo Red Medium mixed with Ultramarine from Van Gogh. This will give me a nice purple color. I've made these washes almost like a, a glaze. They're very, very, very thin. And I simply just work them into the cracks and crevices and around the parts of the skin that I want to darken up. So first I go with the red. In some spots, two, three, four times, just depending on how red or bright I want it. And then the same thing with the purple. Just running it onto the cracks and crevices, trying to darken up the skin, going back and forward. If you go too dark with a certain colour, or well, you're not happy with the position of it, you can just run a pure white spirit again and remove it like we did earlier. With this part of the model, I really can't tell you how I painted it exactly. Certain times I just add some more of one colour, then take away another. Let it dry, have a look, and again add or remove either of the colours. I kept doing this until I was happy with the final colour of the skin. Once I was happy with that stage of the skin, I hit it with a hairdryer on low setting just to dry it out thoroughly. Again, let it sit for about 15 to 20 minutes before handling. Then I made a mix of 6040 Burnt Umber and Ivory Black from Van Gogh. This again had white spirit added into the paint to make it into like a wash. This was quite a thin wash as well. And I ran this over all the clothes, the weapon, the horns, the bones, the hooves, fingernails and any other areas of the model that wasn't skin trying to avoid the skin. If I did get it on the skin again with the white spirit, just removed it with a clean brush. To remove the excess paint around the clothes and from the rest of the model, I used a paintbrush and a Q-tip. The reason I went with the Q-tip is for the clothes, is because there's lots of folds and creases in the, in the material. So rolling a Q-tip over the clothes is a real quick way to remove the excess paint and leave the deepest recesses dark. For the rest of the model, I just used a paintbrush. With that step done, I let that dry thoroughly again, hair dryer, and let it sit for about 15 to 20 minutes. Now I've made myself a mix of burnt umber and white spirit. This is a really, really watery mix of the burnt umber. Just have to look at the video and sort of judge for yourself. But it's almost just like a dirty water, more than a paint. 
and I've run this into all the cracks and crevices of the skin, so in his fat folds, elbow joints, under his armpits, any of his cracks of his face, and anywhere else in the skin where I can see some detail to run this wash into. Now with that step done, I've let it dry again, a lot of drying in this model, and I've gone over to the Azo Red Medium mixed with the Ultramarine to make whatever purple I've got here, and I've started to run that in the cracks and crevices just like the other steps, adding and removing as I'm going along until I was happy with the result. With that step done, I've hit it with the hairdryer again and let it sit for about 15-20 minutes until it was bone dry. Now it's time to move on to the face. With this uh, growth on his face, I imagine it being some sort of chaos mutation. So I've decided to go with Tesseract Glow from Citadel. I've painted this straight from the pot and ran the Tesseract Glow into all the cracks and crevices of this sort of chaosy growth. And also really lightly just put it a little bit outside of the cracks on the flat parts of the skin just to sort of represent a object light source glow coming from inside the wound. Once Tesseract Glow dried, I then got the Model Air White from Vallejo and ran that straight from the pot into the cracks and crevices of the face. Now with the white dry, I'll go back in with the Tesseract Glow to brighten it up and I just kept doing this two or three times until I was happy with the brightness of the Tesseract Glow. And the armor plating on his wrist, this was done the same way as the face with the Tesseract Glow and white, going back and forward until I was happy with the result. Just to note, during the highlighting step, I was adding that purple wash occasionally to the model, just to darken up the skin slowly. Usually between each highlight, I'd add another wash. Now onto the highlighting step. This first colour here, I've highlighted Monster Brown, straight from the pot, and this is over all the Mournfang brown areas. For all the highlighting, I've edge highlighted around the piece, and then gone with little nicks and scratches, just to weather up the materials.
For all the green skin areas, I've hollowed those with Goblin Green from the Army Painter. This is painted straight from the pot. For the yellow areas, I've highlighted those with pale yellow from Vallejo's Game Color range. For all the red areas, I mixed in a little bit of white into the Mephiston red, just to make it a little bit more pinkish, and highlight all the red areas with this colour. Except for the red on his forearm, I didn't highlight with this colour, as that was based with a different red. For this wrapping around his left leg, this is the field grey, and it's the only part of the model with the field grey on it. I mixed in a little bit of white into the paint, just to light up the actual base field grey, and highlight it with this colour. For the silver on the armour piece here, I've gone with lead belcher from Citadel and this is straight from the pot and painted exactly the same way as I did the material. For all the khaki parts, I just highlighted those with the khaki. For the light blue areas of the model, I've highlighted these with griffin blue and this is straight from the pot. For the tree sump part of his weapon, I've highlighted this with Leather Brown from the Army Painter. Once that was done, I then went over the highlights again with a Monster Brown, also from the Army Painter, just to lighten it up a little bit. When highlighting with the Monster Brown, I highlighted a lot less of the area. For the darker metal around the model, I highlighted the silver parts with Lead Belcher from Citadel. And for the gold areas, I highlighted this with Retributor Armor, also from Citadel, and this is straight from the pot. For the shield on his forearm and the cross on the chest piece on the same forearm, I've highlighted these with Corax White. For the blue half of the shield, I've highlighted this with Griffin Blue from the Army Painter. For his teeth, the first highlight was Celestra Grey from Citadel. The second highlight was Gorgon Hyde from the Army Painter. And the third highlight was Corax White from Citadel. His little human snack here, I highlighted his hair with Corax White. For the giant's eyeball, the little human's eyes and the little human's teeth, I painted all these with Corax White. For this little guy, I gave his skin a highlight of tan flesh. This is straight from the pot. For his pants, I highlighted those with Monster Brown. His shirt was highlighted with Leather Brown. His belt was highlighted with Leather Brown. And his shoes were highlighted with Field Grey. To highlight the scales on the right forearm, I've painted each scale about halfway across with Mephiston Red from Citadel. The scales don't have to be perfect, so if you happen to paint a little bit more or a little bit less on each scale, because there are so many, and we're going to add a few colours to them, it'll all blend together nicely and you won't notice, so don't stress too much here.
For the second highlight, I've made a mix of 8020, My Fist on Red and Squeak Orange, both from Citadel. And all I've done here with this paint is applied it to a little bit less of each piece of the scale on the armour. The third and final highlight of the scales, I've added a little bit more squig orange to the paint and just repeated the process, just painting a little bit less of each scale again. Now to paint the eyes on the giant and the little guy in his hand, I've gone to a bad and black from Citadel. Painting in eyes is always difficult, just take your time. If you muck up, just repaint the white and go again. The way I do the eyeball is to drag the paint from top to bottom, covering the entire eye like a line. If it's a big eye like this giant's got, I've put a dot of white on each end of the eye just to shorten it and to stop it from looking like just a line and more of an eyeball. Here with the eye, I made a little mistake with the white, so it's got the black out again and reapplied, and then just try again with the white. For his hooves, fingernails, horns, and weapon, I've highlighted these with khaki from Vallejo, really carefully painting straight lines on the hooves, horns and fingernails. Once I was happy with the straight lines I painted, I put little nicks and lines across those just to show wear and tear and aging to the materials. On the bone, I've highlighted it a lot like the clothes earlier, in random scratches and nicks. The final step of painting is to give the hooves, horns, fingernails and weapon a coat of Agrax Earthshade. This is mixed with a little bit of water. This is just to dull down the highlights and blend them in a bit more naturally. With the Agrax Earthshade painted, put him on a base of your choice and he's ready for the tabletop. And here he is, ready to smash and stomp his way across the model realms. Thanks for watching Nafie Paints. If you liked the video, please click the sub button or leave me a like. If there's anything you'd like to see in a future video, please leave a comment in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one. Catch ya!